Last video we found the solutions to the equation y squared equals x, x plus 1, x plus 2 all over 6 for x and y positive integers. There were three of them, two were easy to spot, but the third wasn't. In this video we'll find that third solution using a purely geometric method. First, let's take a simpler situation and one that we've studied before. Example 1. Find all the Pythagorean triples, that is, all positive integers a, b, and c, such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, since c squared is non-zero, we can divide by it, and now set x equals a over c and y equals b over c. Right, then x and y are rational, and they satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Here's a diagram of that curve. It's the unit circle. How do we find the points on this circle with rational x and y coordinates? Well, the Diophantus chord method says the following. Most of the time, if you draw a line that intersects the circle at at least one point, there will actually be two points of intersection. This is because circles are quadratic. So let's fix one point on the circle that we know, say the point minus one zero, and consider lines through that point. The line of gradient m through that point has equation y equals m times x plus 1, and it intersects the circle in a second point somewhere. Notice that as m varies, the second point of intersection with the circle varies. Now, we want the second point of intersection to give us a rational point on the circle, that is, a point with rational x coordinate and rational y coordinate. Well, if both x and y are rational, then m, which is just y over x plus 1, had better be rational as well. So let's insist that m should be rational. We can work out algebraically where the line intersects the circle. Substituting the equation of the line into the equation of the circle gives m squared plus 1 x squared plus 2m squared x plus m squared minus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation in x, so we can just solve it directly and work out when x is rational. But in fact it's better than that. We know one of the points of intersection happens at x equals minus 1, so we should expect this quadratic expression to have a factor of x plus 1 in it, and in fact it factorises as x plus 1 times m squared plus 1x plus m squared minus 1 equals 0. And so x is minus m squared plus 1 over m squared plus 1. So it turns out that when m is rational, x is always rational too. Okay, putting this x value back into the equation of our line, we get y equals 2m over m squared plus 1, which is again rational. Now, m is rational, let's say m equals e over d. Substituting back up the chain of equations, we can work out x and y in terms of d and e, and then multiply through by all the denominators to find out what our integers a, b, and c must have been. This shows that up to some common factors, we can take a equals d squared minus e squared, b equals 2de, and c equals d squared plus e squared. All right, this is the same parameterization of the Pythagorean triples that we found in video 1. Now, the Diophantus chord method can be a very powerful way of finding rational solutions, but it doesn't always give integer solutions. However, if we're lucky, it sometimes does. Example 2. Let's draw the curve y squared equals x, x plus 1, x plus 2 over 6. Well, before I do that, I'm going to draw the curve y equals x, x plus 1, x plus 2 over 6. And if I draw it accurately enough, I can estimate what y squared equals x, x plus 1, x plus 2 over 6 looks like. This kind of curve is called an elliptic curve. Earlier, we said that most lines through one point of the circle would actually pass through two points of the circle, because the circle was quadratic. Well, this curve is cubic. So we should expect that most lines through two points of the curve will actually pass through three points. And as before, if any two of those points have rational coordinates, the third will be rational as well. But we're looking for integer points this time. Now, okay, we know two already. 1, 1 and 2, 2. Unfortunately, drawing the line through these just gives us the trivial solution 0, 0. We're not interested in 0. In fact, we can see two more trivial solutions here, minus 1, 0, and minus 2, 0. Okay, well, we can try drawing a few more lines. They'll have rational slope, and they'll give us rational solutions. For example, this line gives us this solution, 
this line gives us this solution, but these aren't integers. How do we find integer solutions? It's not too hard to see that on a curve like this, if a line passes through three points, and two of them are integer points, and the gradient of that line is an integer, then the third point is an integer point as well. This follows easily from something called the rational root theorem. Now how can we find a line of integer gradient? Well, this curve is symmetric in the x-axis. So in fact, we know that the reflections of these points also lie on this curve, so that gives us two more points to play with. Now if we pick, say, 1 minus 1 and 2, 2, we get a line of gradient 3. Right? This line through these points is y equals 3x minus 4. Substituting that into the equation of the elliptic curve, then simplifying, we get x cubed minus 51x squared plus 146x minus 96 equals 0. And we know that x equals 1 and x equals 2 should be solutions to this cubic. So we can factorize it as x minus 1 times x minus 2 times something. And that something has to be x minus 48. So once again, we get our non-trivial solution x equals 48, y equals 140. And together with its mirror image and all the trivial solutions we've found, we found nine integer points on this curve. And the results of our previous video imply that no more exist. Finding integral and rational points on elliptic curves, that is, integer and rational solutions to equations like this one, is a very deep and complicated theory in its own right, and I don't have time to get into it here. But here are a couple of things I will mention. Firstly, while finding these solutions can be very difficult, there are general results to help us out. A theorem of Siegel in algebraic geometry implies that elliptic curves only have finitely many integer points, and the Mordell-Vey theorem implies that their rational points form a finitely generated abelian group. Secondly, a lot of the problem of actually finding solutions is computational, and so it can be done by computers. For instance, John Cremona maintains a code base for calculating properties of elliptic curves and tables of elliptic curve data. I'll link to these below. For example, let's take the elliptic curve we just had. After a quick change of coordinates, we can put it in the standard form, look up this elliptic curve in Cremona's tables, and we find a list of 13 integer points in the new coordinates, of which only nine give integer points in the old coordinates. So there's our nine solutions. Have a look at the tables in the video description. Example three. Using a method similar to example one, let's try to analyze the equation a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed. We'll start off over the integers where we already know from our earlier videos that this equation has no non-zero solutions. Just like before, let's divide through by c cubed first. We get a over c cubed plus b over c cubed equals 1. Set x equals a over c and y equals b over c. Then x cubed plus y cubed equals 1. And integer values of a, b, and c give rational values of x and y. The graph of this curve looks like this. It approaches the line y equals minus x in both directions. And it contains these two trivial solutions, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Again, it's a cubic curve, so most of the time a line going through two points will actually go through three. Well, we know the drill by now. Let's pick a point we know, say 1, 0, and draw the line of gradient m through it. That's y equals m times x minus 1. If we want x and y to be rational, then m had better be rational too. Let's substitute this into the equation of our curve. We can expand it all out. And because x equals 1 gives one of the intersection points, we expect a factor of x minus 1, which we can factorize out. That gives us this quadratic equation in x, which we can solve using the formula. The solutions are as follows. Now remember that x is rational, and that happens if and only if the thing under this square root is already a square of something rational. After a quick change of variables, 
we can see that we're really just looking for a rational point on an elliptic curve, y squared equals x cubed minus 432. Cremona's tables now tell us not to expect any non-trivial solutions. Link to the table is in the description. But we could take this question a step further. Instead of asking whether there are integer solutions to Fermat's last theorem for exponent 3, we could ask whether there are Gaussian integer solutions, that is, solutions in z-adjoin i. This amounts to asking for Gaussian rational points on the curve, that is, points in q-adjoin i. Now, I can't draw this curve accurately over the complex numbers, because it would need four real dimensions, but here's a schematic diagram of the idea. Let's suppose that p is a Gaussian rational point on this curve. Then, because the coefficients of the curve are real, the complex conjugate p bar is also a Gaussian rational point on this curve. Here's the line through them. Now there are two things to notice about this line. Firstly, let's call the line L, and let's call the third point it goes through R. Then we could take the complex conjugate of this line, so L is the line through P, P bar, and R. Taking complex conjugates, L bar is the line through P bar, P, and R bar. But these are just the same line. They both go through P and P bar. So we must have R equals R bar, or in other words, r is a rational point. But we know both the rational points, 1, 0, and 0, 1. We just worked that out. Secondly, let's calculate the gradient of this line through p and p bar. Well, if the x-coordinate of p is alpha plus beta i, and the y-coordinate is gamma plus delta i, with alpha, beta, gamma, delta in q, then the gradient ends up being delta over beta. This is also in Q. This is also rational. In other words, every Gaussian rational point, P, on this curve, lies on a line of rational slope through one of the two rational points. And since everything is symmetric in X and Y, let's just pick the same point as before, 1, 0, and the line of gradient M through that. That is, L has equation Y equals M times X minus 1, just like it did before. So we can proceed as before until we get to this stage. Earlier we wanted this expression to be in Q, so we concluded that the expression under this square root sign had to be a square. But now we want this expression to be in Q adjoin i, so the expression under the square root sign could be minus a square. This leads us to another elliptic curve, which we can look up in Cremona's tables to see that there are no solutions. We've shown that Fermat's last theorem for exponent 3 isn't just true over z, it's also true over zi. But it's not true over all rings like this. I'll leave you with an exercise. By arguing in the same way, and by using the final table I've linked below, find some elements a and b of z adjoin root 2, such that a cubed plus b cubed equals 42 cubed.